with the UC. Like, if it doesn't work with the 5 alpha reductase inhibitors, it's not going to couple with the testosterone and it's not going to make DHC, which doesn't give us any reason to take finasteride because you're not going to produce any DHC, problem solved. So I don't see... The What is up guys and welcome back. So today I want to cover a topic that has been in my comment section a couple of times and I've seen it on Reddit and different sub forums and it's a discussion that really gets on my nerves at this point. So I want to just end this discussion once and for all with some solid facts and some studies that can't be denied or anything like that. And I hope by just making this video, if you get into an argument about this, you can share this stuff and you can just share the studies and whatever, whatever I have to say. And we can just end this once and for all and stop spreading all this weird misconception. So of course, this is about if you can get immunity to 5 alpha reductase inhibitors or if they lose effectiveness over time or whatever you can call it. I've seen this a couple of times on different forums on my channel and people claim for some reason that when you use, let's say, finasteride for some time, for a longer period of time, five years or somewhat like that is what I generally see is what people claim something like that is the time period it works and then stop working for some reason. I don't really understand the logic behind that. But what I've seen so far is that people first off say that you are going to get immunity to the 5 alpha reductase inhibitors. First off, the immunity, I don't know what you're supposed to get immunity to because the way that it works is that you have an enzyme that enzyme is what the, let's say, finasteride is going to couple to, so it cannot couple to a testosterone. Your enzyme cannot get immunity to the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors because if it had immunity to that, it would also be immune to your testosterone, which would make it unavailable to make the HC and also in that way just solve our problem which, with the HC. Like, if it doesn't work with the 5 alpha reductase inhibitors, it's not going to couple with the testosterone and it's not going to make DHC, which doesn't give us any reason to take finasteride because you're not going to produce any DHC, problem solved. So I don't see the logic in that statement. The next thing I see is that people claim that you are going to upregulate how much of the 5 alpha reductase enzyme you're going to produce. Now, there is some evidence behind this statement, but I can say for sure, and we are going to take a look at a study in a few moments that really explains this to you guys, that the upregulation is so little compared to the effectiveness of the testoid or finasteroid that it really doesn't make any kind of sense to be scared of that. It is just like when people are taking, let's say, testosterone for a long period of time, there's only so much that your body can do to like reverse whatever state it has, it has come to. And let's say when you take testosterone for a long period of time and you stop taking it, you have very low testosterone. Well, in some cases, like the body isn't just that adaptable. Like for some people, it is TRT for the rest of their life. And that is precisely because the body just can't produce that amount of LH and FSH and testosterone at that point, so it can't get back on track. The same goes for your 5 alpha reductase enzymes. It is limited how much the body can produce, and there is actually some studies that suggest that this isn't a factor to be scared of. Which leads me to the last thing that I just want to like debunk on instantly on my channel here like for some reason people have an idea that when you upregulate the receptors from taking testosterone you have more androgen receptors available this is true and if you are taking something like iu58841 this could be a problem like when you take testosterone you upregulate receptors you get more androgen receptors in your body and if you use an androgen antagonist like RU58841 with an entirely different form of mechanisms of action, then there is some case for concern if you take a lot of juice. 
I don't believe it myself, but at least science suggests that there is some evidence behind this that you are going to create more receptors and it will be harder for your RU58841 to bind to all these set new receptors. So yes, there is some evidence that backs this statement, but we have to look at it in a grander spectrum, like how many receptors can you actually just produce and how many do you actually need to offset the action of IU58841. This is something that we can never know for sure. As I said before several times, it is not ethical to do this kind of studies, hence they will never be done, so we can only speculate. So this is only speculation on the third part, but I don't think there's any case for concern here, because if you were able to create that kind of androgen receptors, well, you definitely have the potential to be the next Mr. Olympia, and I wouldn't care much about your hairline, because you would be swole as fuck. So this leads me back to my statement of earlier about the study I had for you guys I want to talk about today. Now this is mainly about when people are saying that finasteride or tutasteride or whatever is going to lose its effectiveness over time. So the best thing I could come up with at this point, and if anyone has something else that claims something different, please send it to me. It would be very interesting to take a look at. But so far this is what we're going to take a look at today. So in this study from Japan we had I think it was 532 participants. They all ranged from a Norwood 1 to a Norwood 5 in the boldness scale. If you don't know about that, just check out on the internet. There's, there's a myriad of explanations on how the Norwood scale works. What I want to show you guys is that this is 500 Japanese men. They all have some kind of male pattern boldness. And what we can see here is that over a 10 year time period, the general statement was actually in 99.1% of all the cases over a 10 year period of time, they progressively had a better hairline, which means that only 0.9% actually had a worsened hairline than when they started the treatment. So just for this part, just bear with me because I'm actually just scooping this out of my mind as we go. I don't have the study with me. I just remember whatever was in the study and I'm going to show it on the screen here for you guys. But just bear with me if I miss some stuff because I'm doing this entirely out of memory. So what I wanted to show you guys is this table that I'm going to bring up here. And we can see the different kinds of Norwood scales they were on at this point and from the first year until the 10th year. And what we actually can see that in most of the cases, the first one to five years, it is where most of the changes is happening. But if we still look from five years and until 10th year, we can see that every year they had some kind of progression in the hair growth, meaning that in the end, each year they had a little more hair than when they started. So the way this study was performed and why I hold it in such high regard is first off 500 participants is a lot of men. The second thing is that they did a photographic grading of the hair density, which means in the end that they had taken some pictures before and after and under the way all the way. And of course you can see for each participant if his hair is getting thinner or thinner. Same goes for me, like when I started doing my hair loss journey, you can definitely see that my hair was super thin and it's getting better at this point and yada, 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 so on. At the end of the day, guys, this is just what I wanted to lay to rest. Like your finasteride isn't going to lose effectiveness. There's clearly some evidence that the first three or five years, you are going to see a major increase in hair density and it is going to taper off a little. But the same, gives the, the same thing goes for if you're doing cardio or weightlifting, like the first period is always the best. Like when you go from doing zero to doing something, you are going to receive a lot of feedback from your body. And of course, after a while, when you've been doing stuff for a period of time, the return isn't so big. But guys, if you're concerned, if you are finasteride, dutasteride, whatever is going to lose effectiveness over time, I hope this helps you to lay this great myth to rest for some reason. I don't know where it came from. I don't care. But I just want to explain to you, like, first off, by scientific terms, 
why this is completely bonkers. And second, like with the study, I hope this explains to you, like unless you are that 0.9%, you have zero things to worry about because your hairline will get better and better each year for at least 10 years on. And if that ain't enough for you guys, I don't know how old you expect to be, but for me, 10 years, that's a long time, man. I started four years ago. I have six years left of this where positive feedback will come definitely for me. And like at that point, I'm gonna be over 40, man. If I'm gonna lose half to that, well, to hell with that. Guys, that's all I have for you. Until next time, cheers.